Here we go. You're about to see one of the best videos on TIG welding aluminum that I've ever seen. Brad Goodman, Deep South Dime Stacker on Instagram, shot this for a project we're working on together at welderskills.com. It's about full penetration aluminum. How do you tell when you're getting full penetration? How do you get that nice, smooth, even penetration on the backside of a butt weld? Let's do it. Hey guys, Brad Goodman with welderskills.com. Uh, today we're going to look at uh, full penetration welds on an eighth inch plate. Stay tuned. Okay, so if you didn't notice, I went a little bit fast on that first one on purpose. Uh, I guess main of the purpose of this video is to show you uh, one of the biggest, probably one of the biggest mistakes that people make is, is your travel speed. Uh, I know this is something that I struggled with. Uh, I would tend to weld these too fast and I would just struggle getting full penetration. Another thing is my starts. Uh, I tend to want to get a puddle established, get that puddle good and shiny, add filler and move. And when you looked at my when I looked at my test plates, I would always I would always lack penetration beginning. Now I got about to a third, the first third uh, third of the plate, I would start dropping that puddle in. I mean it was all due to just rushing it a little bit. So uh, this is actually the back uh, of the plate I just welded the very first video. Pretty decent weld on the front. I mean the poles are, I mean it's got that stack of dime look, it's shiny and all that fancy stuff that you see on Instagram, but as far as being full penetration, it's just not there. So let's go and look at some videos and uh, we'll kind of walk through it together. Uh, I'm going to show you some tie-ins, uh, uh, some that didn't tie in, and we'll show you one that tied in really well. And then I've got a super duper arc shot here at the end that actually shows that puddle sinking and actually what to look for as you're making this weld. All right, so here we go. Um, getting our puddle established, kind of letting thing that cleaning action backed up here. I didn't quite let it soak long enough for the puddle to sink. So we're gonna have a kind of a, uh, not much of a tie-in right there. And I'll show a picture afterwards. But now you can see as we get started, like right there, you can see that puddle kind of sink as I move forward. Uh, that's what you want to see as you're making these these kind of welds. You know you're getting full penetration. So here we go. You can kind of take a look at the back side of that. You see that it just didn't quite soak enough to tie in really well like it should have. Hey, real quick, if you like this sort of video, if this is the sort of thing you think will help you as far as detailed explanations like this, little nuances like that puddle sinking, please go take the free trial at welderskills.com. You get a week for free. You can sign up with Brad's code, DIMESTACKER25, and get 25% off the first three months. Easy to cancel, no risk. Back to the video. So let's look at another shot. Now here, I'm gonna back up, let that heat soak a minute. See that puddle sink? That's what you're looking for. Uh, it's kind of neat too, because as you move forward, uh, if you're maintaining a good uh, good heat, your uh, puddle will kind of dictate how far forward you move every time. So you want to move forward slowly. You don't want to move forward like jerky and real fast. You want to keep that heat um, applied to the plate as you go. This one did a lot better. Let's let's take a look at the tie-in on this one and. You can really, you can't even tell a made a tie-in. So that's that's really what we're looking for as far as the uh, tie-ins go and and uh, the melt through on that plate. And here's a here's a great arc shot. So watch you getting back on your tack. Watch that puddle just drop. And there you. That's what we're looking for. Uh, and then as you move along, you take your filler, just index your filler, feed your filler, build your puddle up to the size that you want. 
this this is a really great arc shot i mean this is really not what you're going to be looking at but i just wanted to put this in here you can so you could see kind of what's going on and and what to uh, be mindful of as you're making these welds so we looked at some pretty cool arc shots um one of the things I hope you guys noticed was uh, the puddle sinking the way it does. That's really what you want to watch for. And don't rush your starts. Get back there on your, on your tie-in point. Uh, if it's in the middle of the plate or even on the end of the plate where you kind of put your, um, your, start, your start bead when you tied your plates together for your test, we want to back up, let that heat kind of soak a minute, and when that puddle starts to sink, add your filler and move. Um, so I got to thinking about when I finished the end of the video, how, how do you practice for something like this without having to cut a bunch of test plates? Um, this is what I do. So I plasma cut. I have a lot of remnant pieces laying around stuff. I've just random stuff I've cut. And what I'll do is I'll just prop that up on two blocks where I can raise it up off the table a little bit. And then I'll take uh, just a stainless steel wire wheel, stainless steel wire wheel, and uh, that was a mouthful. Stainless steel wire wheel, and uh, just clean the back up a little bit so you're not fighting that oxidation on your plate. Now this is an old plate; it's, it's probably you're probably gonna get some trash. But what I like to do is just lay that plate on the table, um, just just run beads. Uh, I may run a bead on this one, maybe have two or three here, run a bead on this one, then jump over to a new cool one. Because you don't want to really, you really don't want to practice that on a hot plate that's already been heat soaked because it's going to punch through a little bit easier. Um, so have a couple, you know, run a bead on this one, then swap over to this plate, run a bead on this one, and that way it duplicates the way a testing procedure would be. Um, and just you know start stop work on your tie-ins uh get that practice in uh, that's the only way you're going to get this is just to sit down and practice well guys thank you for watching um let me know what you want to see uh if you're not already a member of welder skills get over and join that site there's a lot of great info there uh, a lot of info you won't get anywhere else it's commercial free uh get over on the site and um come see what we got to offer Thanks for watching, guys. See you on the next one. Big thanks to Brad for shooting that video. I know I learned a lot. There's a lot of other videos like this over at welderskills.com. Take the test drive. Oh, and one more thing. Something I just finished up over at Welder Skills is this beginner TIG course. This takes you all the way from setting up a machine to outside corner joints on both steel and aluminum. Simple explanations of polarity and settings of the machine. Super crisp, clear arc shots. I've shot a lot of TIG welding videos, but this is the first time I've put them together in an ABC123 type of a sequence that's specifically designed to build the motor skills and hand-eye coordination that you need, and also to use a minimum amount of material. So it'll save you money, it'll save you a lot of frustration, save you time in learning to TIG weld. Nothing can replace one-on-one -on -one instruction with a seasoned TIG welder, but this is the next best thing, and in some cases might even be better because you can replay as many times as you want. And the good thing about these videos is they will improve over time, and what I mean by that is as questions and comments come in, we can revise the videos. So I'd appreciate it if you'd go check it out at welderskills.com and take a test drive.